Welcome back everyone. This is the Next Racing NX-276 chassis and I have tried about four times to make this video and it just doesn't want me to have a video made of it. it it's it's kind of a frustrating thing. It's actually a quality uh, build. That if you put it together properly, it actually goes together really nice and um, you might have to bore out a few of the holes to get the screws through but that's not a big deal um, be sure to not lose any pieces because there are no extras in this kit and um, just some notes on it when you put these things together I'll I'll put some uh, pictures up of the um, some schematics of the build just because it was so hard for me to find them and uh, just to look on the back side here, it's easier to see it from back here. Um, when you put this together, use the middle. There's three screw, three screws hole, three screw holes for each of the pivot arms on the suspension that are what actually move. I got big tires on there right now, so it's kind of hard to see them. It, they move really smooth, but use the center hole for all of them when you do the first build and uh, carbon fiber is a dense visual field so it's hard to kind of make out the parts i understand that sorry about that but the you can see the silver lock washer or lock nut here and the pivot bolts use the longer of the screws for the actual the pivot axle you get um four screws that are longer and 10 shorter screws the four longer screws are for each of the, those uh, pivot points because they got to go through the uh, pivot arm, a one millimeter bushing, the chassis, and then attached to the uh, screw on the uh, lock nut on the back. Now, the front side of the shock, these use the smaller screws, but they use a two millimeter bushing here. And you repeat that four times. The, the suspension is identical on all four of the um, locations. If you're going to run big tires, here's another tip that will save you some frustration. Each one of these pivot arms has two options, an outer hole and an inner hole. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but if you run big tires, use the outer holes on, your, on the front end only. Because when you steer, it will help the tire clear the spring if you have it on the inner hole the tire will go right into the side of the spring when the sp suspension is compressed and uh, you'll feel it with a small tire it doesn't matter what you do um, so on the front suspension I use both outer holes especially with big tires if I was running small tires I would use the outer option there's two holes on this arm here as well two on each end of it always use the outer arm when connecting the suspension to the link that goes to the to the uh it's kind of a it almost looks like a uh tie rod link in a way or not a tie rod a, what am i trying to say um anti-roll bar link sort of but um, always put the anti-roll bar link side on the outer portion. It'll give you the best travel. If you put it on the inner, you won't get very much suspension flex. Here on the back, you can see the upper hole and the uh, lower hole that it's actually going through. Um, this will give you the best um, overall travel. The front ones I just have a the way I did it, it has a little bit less travel but it has the wheel clearance for the shock which it really needed so on the back use the inner hole for the shock side use the outer hole for the uh, all the link sides and the links go to the axles and when you uh, put this together there's little pivot balls that you'll pop these onto so naturally you're going to end up popping the stock pivot balls out of the shock but save them because you're going to need to screw those pivot balls that you take out of here and install them in the axle so you can pop this link on. Uh, the other thing is you have to get creative 
for a body mount because there are none. There's no body mounts on this. So what I did was uh, I needed a bracket and I had a blown out Emacs servo. So I just cut the servo and you can see the uh, tape there, right there. Um, I just used 3M tape and stuck it on the side. On this side, it popped off. So um, I literally just super glued it on because I don't care. It's fine. Um, and I have magnet mounts plus a uh, strip of Velcro here. I need to do something up front to secure the front of the body when I put it on. But I like magnet mounts because it's really mind mindless. You just drop it on and boom, it's done. You're ready to drive. And um, it's as simple as that. But as I've been driving it, it does not perform as well as a modified um, SCX24. It will, it will outcrawl a stock one easily, no problem. Um, and the reason I say it won't outcrawl a modified one is because if you modify the back of an SCX24 to have hyper extension and hyper articulation, but leave the front stock, it can do some incredible things. And what it will allow you to do is on steep climbs, you can kind of draw the front of the truck up and leave the back tire on the ground so you don't have to lift it immediately because the suspension will flex out and allow that wheel to drop. And then once the front tires are up, you're probably gonna be close to the point where you're at the full extension and the front tires will have a little more to grab and it'll pull it up. So um, that's a little more explanation than you probably wanted, but uh, I have a little bit slightly less um, extension in the front because I'm running the outer holes on both sides of the pivot arm and it it does actually have more extension than a stock SCX24 does but less than one with um, the uh, double barrels and I use the double barrel only on the right rear because it doesn't affect the climb performance and um, I am happy with how this how it runs it could be better, of course, but um, I'm pretty happy with it. I just, I need to get something to secure the front of the truck a little better, just to pin that down solid. Uh, I'll probably end up keeping it like this because it is so cool looking. I love having the cantilever shocks, and the way I had to arrange this, I used the PN90 motor, and it mounts forward where the ESC normally would be, and... Um, Put the uh, battery in the stock battery location, no problem, but side mount to the ESC, and that's really good because it'll help compensate for um, tor torque twist. It doesn't twist that much. I mean, it's a, a low torque twist chassis, and I guess the uh, full-size guys call these cantilever shocks uh, anti-rolls. I don't know. I heard that today from my boss at work. He's a, he's a big time jeeper and has an amazing truck. It's a new Jeep that's got a ridiculous amount of money in it. I don't say amazing very often, but his Jeep is amazing. Anyway, um, got the Emacs servo on it. It's brassed out, and I should probably get some weights on this and figure out what the weight balance is. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty nose heavy, but I do have trail wheels and brass all over it, so... It's not like I'm not giving it every opportunity. I think it will be better and more capable with Hyrax 1.0 tires. I'm finding out the more I do this, the more I think the Hyrax 1.0 is just the way to go. Small tires just do better. The only thing a big tire rig does better is ground clearance. And that is due to center of gravity. Uh, anytime you give up any center of gravity, you're just throwing away the performance. The only one that I will put a caveat on about that is the MoFo version 3 chassis. I'll show you that one. And that's the version 3 that you're used to seeing. But this thing defies logic and physics. It's just crazy, but it doesn't weigh anything. So that's why it's so good. Um, this, this is my best, most capable crawler by far. It's, it's like cheating. It's so good. It just does it. And um, 
if you want a great crawling rig, don't waste money on other things. Just buy this. This thing is good. It looks cool. It's super capable. I cut a hole out of the side for my uh, heat sink on the motor. And that also allows me to know how hot the motor is getting just by touching it. And it's just a, it's a good uh, tactile uh, thermometer. Anytime I want to know how hot it is, I just touch it. But um, I high clearance link out everything I make. And this uh, um, was no different here. It uses the stock pieces and I made a video earlier uh, I'll see if I still have it I may or may not just talking about how this um, since the drive shaft comes in from the side to the middle right in here this upper control arm I don't care what you have deadbolt C10 doesn't matter once you get it flexed this way your, your drive shaft is going to hit that link it just does and I have basically triangulated the link. I channeled it because without it, it literally will stop the articulation with this left front tire. It just doesn't do it right. It's terrible. I need to see my my debt. I've already channeled my debt my uh, uh, this one here. I basically cut a channel right through the um, upper control arm for that drive shaft. But anyway. I'll do some driving video later on with the um, next racing cantilever chassis, and it's cool. I like it. It's it's not as capable as some of my others, but um, it's not for lack of being heavy. I, I should get a weight on it real quick for you. That's probably one of my heaviest ones of any of them. I do have the battery in it, so let me pull the battery out and I'll get one just of the chassis by itself. 384 grams, it's still, it's still a heavy car, but that's due to the amount of brass that I have on the bottom. I've got brass on both, both of the diffs, and I even have the 13 gram front, um, 13 gram front diff cover on that. And then inside of each of these trio wheels is also a brass ring. So it has tons of weight down low, and this uh, chassis itself, if I pull this off, the entire chassis only weighs uh, the carbon fiber pieces and uh, the uh, cross rails and screws to put it all together. That only weighs 23 grams, so it's a very lightweight chassis. And um, I guess uh, we'll just do some running video. I'll add the... Um, pictures of how to put the suspension together and the battery tray in the next few slides and then uh, I'll just do some running stuff just so you can see it in operation. Out of fairness to next racing, I am not going to uh, display on the video what this thing did with stock tires because stock tires are so limited that they just can't do anything. So I'm going to go back to my mudslingers. Next thing I'm going to do is find out if a stock suspension has the same ground clearance as this cantilever one. So this is a stack of 18 quarters, and um, what I'm going to do is just put that under there, and if it hits, it's too many quarters. Looks like the top one is hitting. So I'm going to drop that to 17. Can I put 17 under there? without it hitting? The answer is also no. Pretty sure I'll do 16 though. I'll just move that out of the way. I'll restack them. Hang on a second. Alright, I've restacked it. That is a 16 quarter stack. And will that slide under? Not 
quite, but 15 does. I can just get rid of that one and uh, try to slide it back through. Looks like 15 works. 16 it touches, 15 it, it slides under. But it's really close to 16 as you can see the gap. I'm going to go over to my stock one, throw a battery in it so it's an apples to apples test as close as I can get with uh, mud slingers and um, scramblers. They're pretty close to the same height though. Close enough, it makes no difference. This is the same stack of 15 quarters. Can I slide it under? Oh yeah, very easily. So I'm gonna throw three more. Actually, let's do two more on there. Find out if I can do 17. 17 seems like a good number. And it's hitting at 17. It'll just do it at 16. So they're very, very close on um, ground clearance. Really no difference at all. The next test I'm going to do is articulation against a stock chassis and that is how many it has before it activates the flex blade on my uh, left side there. So I don't want the flex blade to be in play. So uh, I'm going to count how many quarters that is and we'll find out if the uh, next racing one has equivalent amount. And there it is. We've got 18 quarters of flex for a stock chassis. This is the next racing's turn. I want to show you what I've got going here. I have, oh, that is touching. Look at that. That is just barely touching. And um, I'm going to take one out. I'm going to call it one less and then count the stack. I did have to add several quarters. I don't think that was a fair thing with the other one because it wasn't solid touching but that is solid touching I'll count those I know it's more than 18 but um, let's find out what it was well it turns out the next racing chassis has 25 uh, quarters worth of flex on it um, the difference is it's maxed out and I'll show you what a stock SCX24 can do with a uh, double barrel if you want more flex. But 25 is pretty good. Well, this is with a kinetic on a stock chassis, not lengthened. Both tires are still touching on the back. Front ones are touching the ground as well. That number is 37, but that's with a kinetic shock. Um, the kinetics obviously are the king of flex when it comes to articulation, but articulation is good up to a point. Beyond that, it actually hurts you. Uh, the only reason I do it on the left rear is because it does not affect climb performance because what happens during a climb is you get torque twist and torque rise. And it all happens towards the right side, so it's not flexing up like that during a climb. If it would, I'd the uh, drive shaft would have to go the other direction. It will pop like that on steep descents, but it's not enough that it makes me want to take it off. It, it's still better overall with that single um, kinetic shock on the back. And I do like a little bit of flex blade on the left side. I have a single one there and that works fantastic. It's just that extra little bit that it needs when it's trying to go over a peak and the frame is hitting something. So um, that's why I do that. Here's a side note. I added a flex blade to the right rear of the uh, next racing rig and it does not actually add that much um, droop to that side, if at all, maybe a millimeter or two. And the reason for that is the location where it actually connects. And I've got a bad video on that. But the flex blade connects farther back 
on the axle and um, where the uh, STX24 the connection comes more straight down it can take advantage of that cantilever type action on the flex blade with this one it the uh, link is at a more of an angle and it basically does nothing because the extra length that it drops it has to reach back for at an angle so it loses the advantage but it's maybe a millimeter more than the other side where on the SCX24 it's a big angle you can see that even with the, the uh, flex blade on the left side so um, I'm sure I get more ground clearance and droop as far as that goes here as opposed to this but yeah you can see it these uh, axles stay or the not the axles look at the suspension links on the bottom and compare their angle in relationship to the frame and now the SCX 24s they drop quite a bit so you'll get more droop with the stock setup but you'll get more pure articulation I, I should say stock setup with the double barrel but more articulation overall than stock if uh, that is not one of the cases in the next video we'll do some driving and I'll show you its uh, characteristics on the rocks Thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next video.